Our adventure first begins in Darwin, situated along the coast. The first habitat we're going to explore is the mangrove habitat. Mangroves are an unusual habitat. The trees grow where the sand meets the sea, and the root tips push up through the sand to collect oxygen. Such an unusual habitat provides a unique ecosystem for some fascinating creatures. Here we have our first, the Australian white ibis. The Australian white ibis is a distinct bird with a very long curved bill. And we have to ask ourselves, what is this ibis doing? The answer comes when we look at the sand. On the sand, tons of tiny colorful crabs and other crustaceans have burrowed into the mud. Their homes are these holes in the sandy floor. So when the ibis comes by and pokes its bill down these holes, it is collecting a tasty snack. Next, we'll look at the George Brown Darwin Botanical Gardens, home to many birds, including the straw-necked ibis, the colorful rainbow bee-eater, and most excitingly, perhaps, the rufous owl. We'll now take a closer look at a bird that loves digging is often seen in pairs and is well known for its brightly colored legs. Yes, I'm talking about the orange-footed scrub fowl. The orange-footed scrub fowl doesn't just dig in order to find something to eat. It also digs a mound in which to lay its eggs. These mounds can be seen throughout the forest floor. Next, we're going to look at a series of wetlands, starting with a wetland on the road from Darwin to Kakadu National Park, Fog Dam. Here, thousands of wandering whistling ducks come to breed. Once the ducks have settled, a whistling kite swoops in. kite lands to rest on the edge of the duck settlement, but the ducks won't have it. They march inwards towards the kite. They are making a stand. The kite, however, is obstinate and doesn't move. Next, we're going to move to wetlands in Kakadu National Park itself, the first being yellow water. It is unsurprising so much wildlife congregates around water in the Northern Territory when many of the riverbeds look like this one. We set out on a boat at sunrise. Feral horses line the bank. Some are ridden by cattle egret. If you look carefully in the mist, you can spot a family of brulgas, a tall crane-like bird. Here's a pair in better light in case you didn't quite catch them. What other bird life at yellow water can we see? Here are some green pygmy geese swimming together. The Australasian darter along the bank calls to its mate. The Raja shell duck dips his bill in for a drink. Here's the elusive black bittern, a fairly rare bird. And two kingfishers, the colorful Azer kingfisher and the very green sacred kingfisher. This comb-crested jacana uses its large feet to walk on water lilies, or in this case, water lettuce. What else can we see along yellow water? Maybe something that isn't a bird. What about a reptile? How about a crocodile? This male saltwater crocodile is the dominant male of his section of the river, and he is absolutely enormous. Crocodiles like to wait on the bank for their prey, sometimes hiding under a log. They mainly eat fish, wallaby, and feral pigs. Here's another world-class wetland in Kakadu National Park, and Bang Bang Wetlands. Plumed whistling ducks line the banks in the heat. The magpie geese are equally sluggish. In the water, one bird is on the go. Why, it's the royal spoonbill, practicing its unique and comical fishing technique. This bird on the bank is struggling with its breakfast. Finally, it swallows it. Then, it wipes its bill. This is the intermediate egret. Now we're going to look at some of the birds in the Northern Territory with the biggest personalities, the cockatoos and parrots. Here's looking at you, sulfur crested cockatoo. This parrot is boisterous, noisy, and inquisitive. The red-tailed black cockatoo, although similar in personality, 
is much more range restricted to the top end. Here is its relative, the yellow-tailed black cockatoo. It is not found in the top end, however we see it frequently in the winter in Melbourne, Victoria. Although the little Corella can be found across Australia, we found it up north playing in a sprinkler in Jibiru. Here is a red-winged parrot in Litchfield foraging for food. This is the uncommon northern Rosella. And the hooded parrot, an even more uncommon range-restricted parrot usually found in the small town of Pine Creek. And to end, here's a picture of the agile wallaby. <laughs>